Thank you for joining us here for our Sunday morning worship experience at the Temple of Deliverance, where Jesus is Lord. We know that you will not leave and you're not leaving the same way that you came. We've been talking about fighting. We've been talking about producing the glory of God. You know, we've been talking about producing the glory of God even um, when we leave here. There are people that are going through different things and struggling with different things. And this is a time for us to produce His glory. For us <clears throat> to step out of our comfort zone and, and go and be a blessing to someone else. Absolutely no one in this church should be going without. Amen. For no reason. All right. Um, th this is not the church where the pastor lived good and those faithful to the ministry, you know, got to take a step down. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. We want you to know that um, sometimes you, you, you can't tell God how to keep your flow, Amen. how to bless you, how to increase. Can't tell us. Yeah. When you ask for God to take care of you, you have to accept all the means that He used. Come on, now. Right. Come on. Right. And um, Come on. you know, some of you've been faithful to this ministry for years. And um, you know, if I, if I find out that you're going hungry, we will have a deacon to kick your door in, Amen. beat you, and drag you in the middle of the street, and then brand you. Door. It's going to be the brand on your phone. The door. <laughs> right. Uh, we want everybody to know that. Um, we got people in here that are doing well and have the heart of God. Amen. 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 You're not going to call on nobody. Amen. But we ain't got no call on artists in here. Right. Amen. You understand? Amen. So we, we, we know this is a time and season for us to expand. Come on. Come on. You know, God is going to trust you with more. Yes. The more God trusts you with, He wants you to do more. Now you can't tell me, well, you know, I'm not just I'm not that type of person. You know, I don't really get into people's business like that. I don't, and you got to become that kind of person. There's no, no warm, fuzzy conversation to have. Stop who you are and become somebody else. That's going to be a blessing to somebody else. That's all. Right? So that's where you got to be. We want the glory of God to take over. You know, uh, you know, the devil is looking for the church to be in retreat mode, in compromise mode. And we got to just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep fighting, keep speaking well over your home. You hear me? Don't, don't let a couple of coughs go on in your house to change your, your confession. Right? Amen. 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 You mean keep the same powerful words. Amen. This is a fight. Mm -hmm. So in a fight, you might get somebody might get wounded. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you keep on pressing. Right. The war ain't over because you kill us soldier. Alright? Right. So we gotta keep on. We gotta keep pushing. I don't care who died or what. My confession is still the same. Amen. Amen. No, listen here. Listen to me. You know. Us fighting, and I shared this with you uh, last week, a week for last. Having faith in God, most people don't have faith in God. They're trying to, to use this faith thing to get what they want. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't work, there they move go. on. There you go. They move on. That's right. But if God made you a promise mm -hmm. and you got faith in God, you surprised He didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you start asking him, no, 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 God, listen here. The doctor already gave me his report. Right. I don't need to talk to you about that. I want to know why you didn't show up before they did the test. I'm going to rehearse my, my testimony. Come on. You, if you believe God to be a, a God of his word, you need to be mesmerized when he don't do his word in your life. Come on. Amen. When you have faith in God, it's not just for me to get what I want when I want it. If I don't get what he promised, now I'm chasing after him to find out why. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Where was the miscommunication, God? Why do you? See, and this is why we don't get manifestation, because we don't believe God. Amen. We ask God for healing, the doctor say, you got this, and then we say, oh, well, let me shift my confession or shift my prayers. No. When I got faith in God, if the doctor say, listen here, we're going to have to... Uh, do a little biopsy and see if this is cancerous and then you go and you tell God say God you know when they open me up out and they cut me and take a little piece of this tissue I, God I don't want it to be cancerous God I don't want it to be a tumor God I don't want it to be this so the doctor goes in and he come back and say yeah I have bad news it is cancerous mm -hmm. immediately you, 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 you've come out mm -hmm. when the doctor say yep it's cancer you should have what the hell what <laughs> oh no, whoa, oh, 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 right. whoa. We, we, right. we got to take another test. Because right. Right. I know this ain't supposed to be here. Right. Y'all just accept what the doctor right. tells you. Right. Uh -huh. 
Because God didn't show up how you wanted him to show up. Come on. But you better learn how to believe God to your grave. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. 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 So the doctor come back and say, yep, we did the biopsy, it's cancerous, and we're going to start working on chemo. No, 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 wait. Listen, go ahead, schedule what you need to schedule. Uh -huh. But I need to call somebody. <laughs> I'm going to pick you up at 11 o'clock. And I tell you, I'm on my way. And I don't show up. By 1.30, I'm concerned. Right. Come on, wait, 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 what's going on? Where you at? And that should be your prayer. God, where, you, where was you at? These people say, I got something. You say, I ain't. Right. Jesus said, he bore all my sicknesses. Right. Jesus said, he took. So if he took it, I know I ain't went back and got it. Right. So what's the deal? See, Having faith in God has nothing to do with me having proof. Y'all missed that. I want you to get this now. Having faith in God right. has nothing to do with whether or not you got proof. Amen. I believe your book. I believe your word. Right. And I'm expecting it. Right. It's getting bigger. Well, y'all, I heard you. And back to you, God. Right. 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 That's even my mind. I don't understand why you're not doing it. I don't miss me. I'm not going to accept no foolishness about, uh, you know, uh, you won't be dead. Mm -hmm. You're showing me something. No, I was no, bad. No, no, right. You knew that before Jesus got the problem. Yeah. You knew I was going to mess up. Come on now. Before I got on the cross. Before right. Jesus got on the cross. Right. So I don't make no sense for you for, for somebody to come telling me you're trying to punish me for all the wrong. Come on, you right. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to understand when God don't show up, now I'm chasing him to see where he at. What will happen to you? The fight gets intense. But yes. the, don't worry about the fight getting intense. Do what you're supposed to do. Amen. See, the reason why you got to be trained for war is because if you're not, you don't know how to handle when the enemy is attacking. Right. That's true. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know if y'all ever watched the... Uh, War, you know, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I love war movies and different things, and uh, you know, a lot of, the more killing it is, the more I see them like that. And uh, you ever seen an old movie where they where they start shooting them cannons? The reload guy cannot be nerves, they can't lose nerve right. over the noise. Right, right, right. His job is to keep reloading. Right. He, he's like a robot. Right. This is my job. Right. Uh -huh. I gotta keep reloading. He can't hear no noise. Oh, what is that? What is that? We gotta go. No, 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 no. You train for this. Amen. You train for this. So therefore, you keep your position. Yes. Are you hearing me? The worst thing that can ever happen is for you to be in a fight, a group fight, and you don't know your position. Everybody want to be on top of the tank. Well, let me shoot the gun some. Let me shoot the No, no, you, you the driver. You got to get, you got to move the tank forward. Everybody got a part to play. You need to play your part well. Amen. I mean, we going to win, with or without you. Amen. I know somebody told you that there's a job can't nobody do but, but you. Amen. Somebody told Saul that same lie. Right. And Paul and David moved right on in. Mm -hmm. So you got to get to the place to know I got a part to play and I'm going to play it. You know, Daniel, I, I don't, I'm not going to be able to read, but Daniel chapter number three. And it's talking about the three Hebrew boys. Y'all heard that story before, right? The three Hebrew boys, King Nebuchadnezzar, had built a, a statue. And, uh, and no, I'm sorry, he, he put together a band and, uh, and a statue, the golden image. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the golden image uh, was uh, called, translated into Bell. And uh, he said, when you hear music, you got to bow down and worship this image, which was about nine feet, nine inches tall. Mm -hmm. And nine feet nine inches wide, and he said you got to go bow down and worship the image. Well, what happened was uh, the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and the band Negro, mm -hmm. they was over in another part of town, not worship. The music would play. It's like the national anthem. You turn to the flag, mm -hmm. and you you know, put put the hat or take your hat off, put it on your heart and all that stuff. Well, that's what it was. It was a salute. But not only a salute, but a form of worship is what the king wanted. Well, that, that became, or somebody saw that the three Hebrew boys was not worshiping the golden image and ran back to the king and said, King Nebuchadnezzar, 
said, uh, yeah, they, them three Jews boys, them boys over there, they not, they, they not even worse with their music playing. They still eating and talking. And like some of y'all do, you know, when worship going on. Mm. They're disrespecting. They're not, they, I mean, they're playing and they all this stuff. They're on their phones. And, and the king said, bring them here. And the king said, when the king brought the king is so used to people being intimidated by his presence. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I, let's see, I'm going to play the music. When you hear the music, you know what to do. And, and they said, well, king, let's hear Well, well, well we're not going to do that. We're not going to worship the golden image. We're not going to worship your God. We're not going to bow down. <clears throat> the king got sort of furious because he's standing right in front of them and they're bold enough to say they're not going to do it. And, uh, and, and the king said, well, heat the furnace seven times high. I'm just telling you the story. You can read it in Daniel, John chapter number three when you get home. He said, he it seven times hotter. They said the fire was so hot, the men that went to go throw them into the furnace, that the, the heat, the intensity of the heat, scorched them, killed them. Right. So that was intense heat. And uh, But one thing they said, before they went in, they said, King, listen to me. I don't know if he's going to come rescue us. But whether he do or whether he don't, you need to know we ain't going to worship your image. And he's still God. Yeah. Mm, he still has the power. See, he, God is not God, and God is not a healer, and God is not a way maker because he healed you. He's just a healer, period. Right. That's right. Come on. You can fall down right now. He's still a healer. Amen, 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 amen. amen. If, if he was, ain't no answer to this. He is a healer. Amen. That sums it up. So if there's ever... A, 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 a non uh, his, his, his promise is not being produced. It's never a fault of who he is. Right. Huh? That's true. You understand? Right. 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 Listen to me. Right now, people are having conversations from one cell phone to another. Right. Why don't you listen in and see what's going on? You want to know why? You don't have the equipment, the technology, right. the know how, how to tap into that frequency. Mm -hmm. People been coming to church, but they never have learned how to tap into God's frequency. If you can't hear from God, I was talking to a preacher, an uh, older preacher, seasoned preacher, and I told him, I said, well, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit told me. Because at this point, and you know, at this point in my life, I don't need friends. I don't want friends. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's just not a good makeup for me anyway. So I said, uh, I said, Reverend, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. We can't preach what we know no more. We need to preach what we're told. Amen. And if you ain't hear from God, preachers need to shut up. Amen. Don't preach to me what makes sense. Don't preach to me. Listen to me. I know what society say, but you need to hear from God. Amen. You need to hear from God. The church is no longer belong to God. That's right. Preachers see another preacher do something, then they come try to do it. You know, I love... Um, I told my wife the other day, I love Bishop David Ehidipo, and he is one of the most powerful preachers in the world. In the world. Yes. The only church that I know of today that's still raising people from the dead. Mm -hmm. In their worship. Now, I don't know if you ever heard what, the, what people would call bad singing, but sometimes you can hear that worship going on at this. Boy, you be saying, Lord, gee, I know they ain't selling no records. But people coming up, Oh, you hear me? Right. Are you listening to me? Yes. Man, y'all hear that? Man, that song that we were singing. Man, let me tell you something. You ain't got to know that. You ain't got to know the song. Y'all gonna sing it how I feel it. Now, now yeah. whether y'all like it or not, I'm singing this. As long as I got breath, you can count on me, God. Yeah. Ain't no rock gonna cry in my place. Yeah. So, so, so listen to me. So, but he will say things that I know ain't for me. Now, I'm about to say something to you. As, as powerful as he is, as anointed as he is, he has mentored me through his books, his, his videos, his, his CDs, tapes, when t cassette tapes was out. I've been, I've been listening to Bishop David Yudipo for years, since 1990 something. Well, and then he fell off the earth. I couldn't even find him no more. That's the God's untrue. He preached at Creflo Dollar Church in 1990 something. I had a copy of his, of his CD, and uh, when, not CD, the cassette tape. And uh, at that time, you had to order rewind. I used to listen to them all night. That tape got messed up. I ordered another one. Then they, they didn't make that cassette into CD. So then I was just screwed. And then I tried ordering some of this stuff. I'm telling you, the devil blocked me once good. Anyway, as long as he is, he's been a blessing in my life for years. He would say things 
about small churches, I know ain't for me. He he said, if you pastoring and you in your church been 50 members for 20 years, somebody should call the police on you. Wow. Now you now listen, I'm not saying that he's wrong, he's talking to a specific group of people. Right. Then what you gotta understand, when I hear from God, that overrides whoever's in the earth got an opinion. Yeah. Right. You understand? Yeah. Well, I mean, he's building a church right now that seats 100,000 uh, people. Mm -hmm. He now is in a, a, a sanctuary that seats 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. 50,000 people. He has about five services a day. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. So when you hear somebody like that, immediately you'll hear that and think, I need to do that. No, you need to do what you told. That's right. right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because it, now I, I love him, so don't let nobody think I'm coming at him in any way. Don't the, the devil even speak to you like that. Right. He would have shut Jesus' church down. Because <laughs> Jesus went from 5,000 to 12, right. just like that. Right. And one of them was the devil. Right. 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 Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to hear from heaven and know what you need to be doing right. and implement that into your life. Yeah. Right. Don't nobody care nothing about your Greek and your Hebrew. You need to learn how to hear from heaven and implement that in your life. Yeah. Even in your homes, you got to learn how to hear from heaven, implement it into your, into your home, yeah. into your marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I was talking to someone, and I, I told them, I, when, it was a discussion. It was, in a, it was a mature discussion, mm -hmm. right? So don't, don't get crazy and stupid. And he was talking about marriages. And it was talking about um, how men be, don't stay sexually attracted to their wives and over a course of time, sex fizzle out. And that's what the, com the base of the conversation was. And, um, and I, I uh, was, was talking with him and, and I, I told him, I said, well, I can't, I can't say I'm a witness. I can't help you. I can't help you with that. But what I can tell you is without the Holy Ghost, I might be in agreement. Why? Because there's so many things you got to know what to put into your home and into your marriage to keep it right. Amen. Now you can't go into a marriage saying what you ain't going to allow in. Amen. I'm about to say something. I'm about to say, you put this in your hope chest. You can't go in getting married already saying I ain't going to let forgiveness in. Amen. I'll let you know what I'll forgive. You can't go have a successful marriage. Amen. You can't go in no marriage talking about something. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to accept, what I ain't going to accept. And I ain't going to take no step down and, and I got standards and I no, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. You have to go in willing to hear and obey. Yeah. Hear and obey. Yeah. Hear and obey. Listen to me. The less control God have over your life, the less you'll see God in your life. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. You can't do what you want when you want. And when you want God, he comes in. Either Jesus is Lord all the time, or he's Lord none of the time. Yes, come on. So you got to forgive some stuff. My wife and I had this discussion one time. It wasn't nothing major to me. But I asked her a question because, you know, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not the type of guy to keep his car, you know, 100, if y'all know what that means. Now, I don't know if y'all, you know, I come from the hood. Every once in a while, somebody had a Lincoln. You don't sit on that Lincoln. They had a Cadillac. You don't even look at it. <laughs> and they keep it right. They kept it shining. And, you know, the white walls is white. And all that stuff. And uh, But I'm not that type of guy. So normally during my prayer time, I'll go and wash my car. But I wouldn't wash hers. And I, I don't do it because I don't care. You know what I mean? I, really, I just don't. I'm not feeling take it to, you know, I don't take my black car to the car wash because it shows I used to have a detailing business. And even with the cloths, it, it leaves those swirl things on it. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, you're you going to get them in regardless. Anytime you use a rag, unless you go constantly, you got a hundred rags to wipe the car down with. Either way, you're going to get swirls and all stuff, scratches and stuff. And uh, so, you know, I just watch, keep moving, keep moving. But I remember a while ago we had this discussion, and I asked her something about, you know, how do you feel about me not washing your car? And then she said something about, you know, uh, well, you know, figure you should. Or something. I don't remember all the details of it. But let me tell you what happened. <clears throat> This is about a year or two ago. I don't know how long ago. And uh, let me come to this one. And uh, let me tell you what happened. The devil immediately started telling me, you know what? She's ungrateful is what she is. Now, she didn't complain. I asked her. Right. I asked her. 
The devil said to me, no, no, I'm, I'm trying to take you somewhere. Because y'all listen to the devil, but you won't listen to God. Because the way God sent you is narrow, more difficult, more pressing. So the devil said, she's ungrateful. All you be doing, you not only buy a car, you don't make the payments. You don't pay, you pay the insurance. She do this, she do this. She, like, she sets her own allowance. Don't tell my wife what her allowance is, she tell me. And I ordered, the devil said, now she gonna talk, she expect you out here. What? She can't wash the car, she can't go to the car lot. Right? I said, never mind your damn business. All right. I will not entertain that Amen. idea. That's foolishness. Amen. Amen. But you see how that can take off in the self esteem. Right. 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 Do you understand? Right. And everybody, now, now, you know, most, some women are a little off, but most people would agree. Yeah, yeah Pastor, you did enough. <laughs> you say what? <laughs> and you did what? <laughs> yeah, you did enough. You did enough. Let me tell you something. That devil will always. Give you an easy way, which you can just lay down and do. Mm -hmm. But to overlook it and keep moving. Come on. So yesterday, I was I walked, you know, put a little water on my car, and uh, and I told her to have the kids because that's why you know we don't wash my wife, well, uh, fix my wife's car because the kids be driving that car, they ain't crashing all up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I said, hey, tell the kids to come down here, and they need to. Scrub these rims or something. I said, I sprayed them. They need to come and, and scrub them or something like that. So I'm out there for about an hour. Ain't no kids coming back. <laughs> that devil start talking again. Mm -hmm. The devil said, Now you told her to tell them kids to come down here and wash this car. <laughs> and she ain't dead, Jack. Right, right. Yeah, and he start telling you all what you He always telling you what you do. Right. That's so good. Right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, so he just kept talking, kept talking. I said, well, then I guess I, I'll fix this. I'll wash the car. That was a whole, whole way a minute now. That's not what I was trying to get you at. I was getting you to stick your head in the door and start screaming. Right. Right. He said, no. So then I, I washed. I said, and then I washed the car. And then I said, the rims had them, that heavy brake dust on it. You don't clean your, your rims. That brake dust lock in on your rim. Then you got to use acid, you know, all of stuff. So I went and I started cleaning one rim. And I said, well, I cleaned this one to show them how it's done, right? So they can look at this rim and know the rest of them need to look like. Because y'all don't know my kids. You know what I'm saying? My kids, he was, that's it. And let me tell you this. This is the God's honest truth. Because when I wash cars, I'm in prayer. I'm in worship. I'm in prayer when I'm washing my cars. So I finished the rim, and the Holy Spirit said to me, stay out here with me a little bit longer. Let's just talk. When we got finished talking, I had cleaned all the rims. Mm -hmm. Now each rim took about 10, 15 minutes. Because mm -hmm. the brake dust is, is locked on. Right. And I'm just a scrubbing, but I'm but when I'm talking to God, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. If you let that devil into your house, he will destroy you. Yes. Now you may still be married, but you'll start learning to tolerate each other mm -hmm. instead of being in love with each other. Right. So when I was talking you know, to the group of men, I said to them, I said, I can't help you with that. I don't have that problem. But, but the Holy Ghost. I was at a marriage retreat one time. I went with some deep people. And, um, and I, you know, me, I, 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 don't, I don't really care too much. I, I didn't know they was like that, you know, at the, point, at the time. But my wife and I went to the marriage retreat. We pull up about, about a minute talking. And I'm thinking, oh, this is a good time. But I had got a word from the Lord. On my way up there, this is what God told me. God said, and I shared it here. Oh, uh, after God, God said to me this is years ago, y'all might remember it. God said, B married men think bachelors, single men, got a better love life than married men. Now look, look what this is what this is what the Holy Spirit said to me on my way up. He said, Go tell the men the devil don't have a better sex plan than me. Ooh. Amen. Do you hear it? So I didn't know sex was offensive to these guys. You know, you say the word sex, and they just they got ripped deep. And, you know. So I said, we was all huddled around. I said, you know, my way up here, God said, said to me, you know, um, that to tell the married men 
that the devil don't have a better sex plan than him. You don't need it. Sex is not great because it's new. Come on, brother. Come on now, man. Y'all don't leave me hanging. A, a, a new piece seemed to do something to you. Come on. Come on. And have a new one when you're not married. You can change that piece out as regular as you want. Come on now. Come on. You can keep one of them in North in it, one of the South in it. Come on. You can, you can switch them around. You understand? One over the bridge. One, come on. One in Delaware, depending on where you're positioned. You can have one in Delaware, one in, in PA, Jersey. Come on. I always keep one abroad. Because you got that lifestyle. And that look like, oh man, oh man, this is the life. God said, tell him, that's all a front. Come they, on, the devil ain't got nothing better than me. Come on now. The devil ain't got nothing better than me. Come on, man. Now, 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 see, here's the thing. Now, if you can't receive talk like that, the devil coming in. Yes, yes, yes. Devil coming in. One man said, God, I'm so, I feel so bad for him. He said him and his wife have sex maybe once every six, seven months. Mm. <laughs> he been married 15 years. Lord. <laughs> Y'all said 15 years. Now look, 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 now, now we laughing and joking about it, but you'd be surprised how many people start to become unaffectionate to their spouse. The excitement fade off. That devil will come in your eyes. You'll never see how beautiful your wife is. You'll see it in somebody else. But you won't see it in your life. Mm -hmm. So he, he was saying that, you know, it was uh, seven months old or something. He was like, well, you know, it's, it's uh, and so, you know, I just thought while I'm talking, I'm researching. Mm -hmm. And uh, they start talking about the number one reasons that uh, sex start to leave. Uh, they start pursuing their professions. Right. Children. Start having children and stuff like that. And that takes away time from each other and all this other stuff. And I looked at all this. I said, all this here is foolish. This is just a bunch of lies. That ain't nothing for you to accept and let the devil in. Right. That's all that is. Right. Come on now. That's all that is. Come on. Come on. No, no, come on now. How you going to have one kid in 1990, mm -hmm. another kid in 1992, another kid in 1994, and all this stuff. If the kids is a problem, come on now. How you gonna keep making kids? Right. That's a lie. Right. I don't know. Do. Don't don't it just because it's a statistic right. don't mean it's a fact. It's a fact. Right. Right. That's true. Right. Somebody read that. You know what they're saying? Yeah, it's, it's because we start having kids. Right. Shut that down. Yeah. Don't let that devil give you information to run God out your mouth. Ooh. If you accept what the devil tell you, he'll destroy your marriage. You have a kid, y'all y'all working your own profession. Now you you work in your business, you making two million dollars a year, she work up business making two million dollars a year, y'all ain't got time for each other. The devil is a liar. Yes. Don't don't allow the devil to creep in because the world say this is common. Amen. Don't don't let them start talking about 95%. Right. You know, we was at the table. We was at the table yesterday, and uh I don't know, something was said. And, uh, and uh, Alex said, uh, oh, oh, they, they were talking about how kids pay other kids to do their online classes. Right. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I said, well, is the girl smart? You know, you know, and she, and she, and Alex said, for the most part. Mm -hmm. And Ashton said, but what about the other part? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that made good sense to me. Yeah. Most of the time, it ain't good enough. You know what I'm saying? If somebody, somebody got a gun, I shoot the apple over your head and say, yeah, I hit the apple most of the time. Yeah. What about the times you don't hit the apple? <laughs> don't you let that devil tell you 95% of the time this is, don't listen to that foolishness. Right. They said, they said, I, I tell them, they said, you know, they always had this debate, can a woman raise a man? And stuff like that. And I tell them all the same time, my mother did pretty good with me. Yeah, no, no, now, now, now it is what it is. Mm -hmm. If you're going to treat your son like a girl, don't look for a man to come out. Right. Right. That's true. Right. That's true. Now I read some stuff I know that apply. You know, you know, you don't give your, your son no sissy name. Right. Come here, cutie pie. Oh, mama, little cutie pie. No, if you call him handsome, you call him good, but he's not cute. That's too feminine, you know? Right, right, right. No, I mean, you, you, you think, well, that don't matter. 
No, words do matter. So, so when a woman don't know how to raise a man, she can't do it. But she can do it. Right. Maybe we got here today and we talked about how we learn how to behave. We ain't no father in the house. My father wasn't in church. He can be over there playing if you want to. My mama ain't have to. She's just a little. Right. Amen. <laughs> I tap it. Right. 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 And, 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 and you know, I used to sit next to Junior. And um, he, he hit me. Your mom looking at you. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing funny no more? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ain't nothing funny no more? Don't talk to me. I don't want no candy. I don't want nothing, man. <laughs> now, now, then there were looks. You know, let me tell you something. Black folk always can talk without using words. Yes. There was a look she'd give that said, you're going to get your butt with that service. Yeah, right. And there was another look she'd give you that said, this is a war. Right. 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 Now, if she gave you a warning, and she said, just look at your cut eyes, that's your warning. But that stare and a head shake, it's on. It's on. Then you can act like she going to forget out the service. She going to greet the people, but she coming to get you. Coming to get you. You can, you can act up, you can do all you want. Listen to me. Don't let the statistic tell you nothing about who need to be in the house for, for a boy to know how to be respectful. Yes, mm -hmm. Now, you, listen to me. You don't need a man in the house for him to know to respect your elders. Right. That's right. That's true. Come on. All right? So don't let statistics rule your life. You got to let God rule your life. Oh, man, I'm, I'm all off. I, I, you know, this is somebody's... People say, I don't know who that's for. I don't care what's for. I said it. That's it. <laughs> so the three Hebrew boys would not give in. Now, when he when they wouldn't give in, let me tell you what, what happens now. King Nebuchadnezzar looks in and he said, oh my God, did we not throw three in? But I see four. Now, what you have to understand is, when you make a decision that you're going to live for God, God said, I'm going to be with you. Amen. You cannot represent God in your life and God leave you hanging. You know, here sometimes we be reading that thing and it said, when will you come and avenge me? When will you come? When will you fulfill your promise? And sometimes you get to the place, you start thinking that God going to just let the devil do what he want. God said, no, I ain't. I'm with you. Amen. Notice when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, it was at the point that Jesus made up his mind, I'm going to do what the Father wants. Angels came and ministered to him. Amen. These Hebrew boys said, I'm willing to die for the cause. I will not bow down to this. I am not going to live in fear because the world is going all crazy. Amen. Now, there are people that are upset because you won't be scared like them. Right. That's true. That's true. Listen, it's just stupid to go to church right now. It's the dumbest thing. Listen, you have your faith in the government. I got my faith in God. That's right. Amen. Yes, amen. I listen to me, I'm not trying to get people to believe like me, right. but I know, listen, one thing is for sure, I ain't out there doing nothing stupid. But if, and if I go in your store, you say I gotta cover my face, I cover my right, face. Right. You say, I'm blah, I'm blah, but you ain't about to give me who I see in it all day. Right. Amen. Come on. Amen. You ain't about to do that. That's right. You ain't about to give me some other death rate. And everybody lying about yeah. it. Come on now. Right. Come on. Come on. The, the Christians want to be part of the corona movement. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. I just, I just, you know, yeah. I, you know, it's a good thing and then it's a bad thing. But all the roaches in my house died of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now stop that. Why do you want to be part of the Corona celebration? Right. Right. I, listen, I was talking to somebody. They went, everybody else that get tested for Corona, the tests come back a day or two later. Mm -hmm. Some places longer than that. This is the only person I know that went to the doctor and within three, four hours, they know they got corona. Right, right. <laughs> no, no, they can say you have symptoms. Right. Because if you're coughing or, I don't know, headaches, I don't know what they call it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your eyes blinking. At this point, if, if, it's, <laughs> if, if it's moisture in your mouth, at this point, you got corona. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but why are you out here trying to be a part of this? Right. Right. You ain't got no stupid risk. They probably need to test you. Right. That's true. <laughs> but you want to be a part of this movement going, Sa be separated, saith the Lord. Right. Now y'all just think he's talking about the pot house, the weed house, all that stuff, fornicate. No, be separated from what the devil got going on in this world. Yeah. I will not be all crazy right. acting and stupid acting. Amen. 
I'm going to have my right mind. Come on. Have my right mind. I am not about to sit around here. Listen, we done had kids. One time, we, when, we, we, when we have our kids room, in their mattress, we have, we have all their mattresses covered. And, uh, you know, holding out, we used to work well, for sleepies, and uh, we know about mattresses. I know how to look for bed bugs, mm -hmm. right? So, every once in a while, I would go in and inspect, and I would notice certain things or around the bed or on the floor, whatever, and that looked like bed. And what I would do is start exterminating. They can't get into the mattress to live, but they can't live in your blankets and all that stuff on any type of cloth. You know, they, they don't just sit on the surface like that. You know, they got to find somewhere to sit there. And, um, and I called my cousin, which was an exterminator, and I said, hey, man, what's going on with these bad bugs and stuff like that? He, I said, I see small kids. He was telling me what to do about, about how to exterminate, how to fumigate, and all this other stuff. He said, every time somebody come over your house, they can bring bad bugs. Right. That's true. That's true. He said, man, somebody can sit on your, at your dining room table and bring bed bugs. He said, man, you can't be, listen to me, that's the same, I treat bed bugs and corona the same way. Yeah, come on, come on man. now. Come on. Now, y'all ain't seen what really happened when bed bugs take over a house. I have. Right. Like, usually, it depends on how much money you got. You, you, <laughs> you, you ain't got much money. You just got to you get your little can spray and go with it. But people have thrown out everything, carpets, everything out of the house. <laughs> Exterminating costs some money. Mm -hmm. Then you got to be out of the house for so long. Heat the house up. All this stuff. I treat Corona just like I treat bed bugs. Mm -hmm. Check for it. Exterminate when I even don't see nothing. Mm -hmm. I got these cans. And when they go off to school, I just let the cans go off in the room, close the door, you know, and just let, it, just let it go. I ain't got to see nothing. Just in case one hiding somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I treat the same way. Right. So, so you, you, you can't be freaking out because something is real. Right. I know it's real. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. But I ain't, ain't going to change my life. Right. Now, don't you try to have faith like I got, right. but you ain't got the relationship like that. Right. Right. Y'all, this corona changed y'all life. I'm telling you. People being devastated by the devil is having a field day. You hear me? Yeah. I'm telling you, he having a field day with his thing. Yeah. Look, look at now. Turn to Daniel chapter number 6. This is... Daniel being thrown in the lion's den. They put up something trying to change his relationship with God, trying to change what, what he believed. And the king signed a decree. King Darius signed a decree saying nobody can ask of anything, of any God, or anybody, for so many days. Well, they were trying to set Daniel up from the get up. So when Daniel went to go pray, like he always do, they went running to the king, enforced the law that the king had to, had to carry out of uh, putting Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. Now this is what you got to understand. They, there are things that the world will try to make you submit to. God say, if you stay with me, now I'm not, listen to me, you got to do what you got to do. You, gotta get, you, you get the flu shot, go ahead and get it. You want to get vaccine, whatever, go ahead and get it. God said, if you stay with me and you are going to be penalized for being associated with me, he said, I got your back. Yes. Amen. Yes. I got your back. So they threw Daniel in the lion's den. The Bible said that, that the, the angel came, shut the lion's mouth. But I'm going to tell you something. How, how he shut the lion's mouth is, is because, now this is a little revelation. You got, to, you got to dig a little deep spiritually for this. How he shut the lion's mouth is that they were, the lions were able to see Daniel for who he was. Mm -hmm. He was just another lion mm -hmm. walking in the cave. Okay. You, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So Daniel now refused to allow what's going on to change my relationship with God. Right. Right. And people say, well, you know, I ain't got to go to church and I can keep my relationship with God and all sorts of stuff. That's fine. Me, I need to be in his house. Yeah. And if I have an option, I'm coming to his house. Amen. That's me. Yes. All right? I'm not telling everybody to go to church. I'm not telling, I'm telling pastors to open up their church. That's not what I'm telling them. Let me tell you something. When somebody, oh God, let me, let me, in 1 Samuel 17, you're going to read these when you get home. I, I'm, there's, gotta, there's so many scriptures I got to just breathe through. This is David going here in Goliath talk about the, the army of the living God. The true living God. 
And uh, Goliath is out there talking about y'all a bunch of sissies. Oh, uh, your God's supposed to back you up. Yeah, all y'all, all y'all a bunch of punks. You a punk, your God's a punk. And David hears this, and David says, wait a minute now. What is he talking about? That's what you got to understand. The moment they start talking about the church is irrelevant, something in you need to rise up. That's right. Right. That's right. Make more confessions. Pray, talk to God more. Get more instructions from God. Hear from heaven. Cover your home. Start hearing that word. I don't care what's going on. You know, if I feel something that ain't right with my body, I get my medicine. The word of God. I Amen. listen to it all night. Amen. Amen. Even after my body feel now, y'all don't you, you got you do have to do what you gotta do, all right? But I had tore um all of the, the ACL, the, all of the different alphabets in your knee. And the LL and the ligaments and all whatever. And uh, what happened was I I was standing up on something that was, that actually was about this high. And I forgot I was up there. And I'm working, and when I went to go step back. Of course, I, you know, fell back. Well, what happened was my whole leg came down. And, um, you know, that's not a good feeling when you can't bring it back up. You understand? So finally this guy helped me and, like, literally we forced the knee back to go forward because it was locked back, locked. Well, now I'm not telling you what to do, all right? You get to do what you should do. I remember, because my job is different than most jobs. I don't work, I don't eat. Amen. I remember the pain. I couldn't even put my foot on the floor. It was so intense. It hurt so bad. But I knew I had to go to work. Because I had a route going into New York. I was doing delivering the vitamin shops out there. It was snowing during that time. So now you're trying to pull stuff on ice and snow with one leg. Every step I made, I said, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. By Jesus stripes I'm healed. Everybody said, oh no, you got to do this. You got to, you got to go. They're going to have to do You got to be out of work for six months till you got to. There ain't no six months. I can't be out of work for six months. That's just not, that's not feasible for me. Listen, I kept quoting, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. All night long, I was listening to sermons. All night long. All night long. I got these braces and all this stuff on my knee. Then this man was come telling me, he said, listen, let me tell you some different things you need to put in your body. It'll help keep the fluid away. My man, it was, oh my God. He said, keep the fluid away, and it's going to help your body to heal. Man, let me tell you something. It was something mixed with black seed oil and all that stuff. I started taking that stuff. Oh my God. And let me tell you something. I went from not being able to put my foot on the floor to limping, and I'm, I'm still hearing the scriptures. I'm still hearing the scriptures. I'm still confessing. By Jesus stripes, I'm here. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because that's a weapon trying to attack my family. I got to provide. I never once went to the doctor other than, you know, to see how, you know, I don't think I even went for that. I, I never went to the doctor far as for him to operate, give me nothing, no, no pain medicine, none of that stuff. I didn't, I didn't take none of that. Now, today, you would believe it's impossible for me to walk. I started back running the other day. I ain't ran in years since I messed up my knee. I started back running. I ran a little, walked a little, ran a little, walked a little, you don't want to test it. You, know then you got to lose a little weight before you start running. You can't be putting all the bounce on that knee. Right. Man, let me tell you something. My knee is 100. Now, now, here's the thing. It didn't happen in an instant for me. But I really believe that God would heal me. Yeah. And every morning I'd get up looking for the pain to not be there. Every morning I'll see how far I could bend my leg. Because I'm expecting him to show up. Amen. No, 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 no. I wasn't about to be talking about I believe Jesus and they're going to send. Now, I'm not telling you to do this. Then run to the doctors, take a bunch of pain pills, and then come here and make up a testimony that's half lie and half truth. If you're going to believe God, you're going to have to go through something. Amen. The devil's going to do what he... Now, this is what you need to understand. Worship in this church is essential. Amen. Amen. You hear it? Amen. Prayer and worship in the beginning of these services is, is the foundation of anything that we're going to receive or give. Amen. Amen. You hear it? Amen. I cannot just hear the word 
word and think it's all right. I cannot just, you know, get emotionalized, start shouting and dancing and think it's all right. No, I need to be in the presence of God. I need to usher in the blessings of God on this place. Amen. So when we come here, we pray and we worship him. We know when the devil, listen, when the devil hear true worship, he got to shut that thing down. You know, you know, the Bible said that when Saul was troubled, they would go and send for David for him to play the harp. Yes, yes. He would get depressed. He would get down and then would come and begin to play the harp, worship music, and those spirits would lift up off of him. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. The devil got a plan to destroy us. Yes, yes, he does. Because you want to know why I'm going to tell you something. If, you, if I stop your worship, and stop corporate prayer. You understand? Because let's just be honest. Worship in your home don't usually reach the same level it will in his house. Mm -hmm. No, you bless him. You know, sometimes, you know, you may get a wave, come through there, and you, you holler or something, you know. But in his house, it's more intense. Yeah. Separate him from that. Same way you try to separate Daniel from talking to God every day. The devil is always trying to separate us from our power source. We got to get to the place that we understand clearly. I got to keep on keeping on. Amen. Keep on pressing. Amen. Oh, last one. And then, and then we, can, we can move on. <sighs> if you're going to make up your mind that you're not going to give up, then I need to learn and I need to practice my fighting skills. That's true. Right. That's true. You, again, you don't know how, how good of a fighter you are until you get into a fight. Not no rehearsal stuff. Amen. If the devil don't attack you, you don't really know how strong you are. Right, true. That devil don't attack your money, you don't know whether or not you live it in faith. Amen. That devil don't even attack some people. The devil just say, boo, and they'll take God money, the light bill money, the landlord money. Everybody, the devil said, boo. He better not take a couple of dollars. And then you start listening to the people in the barber shop and they start telling this head, Rev, Rev, all right. You need to worry about you. You need to make sure you all right. You can't be giving him your money. His family, look, listen to me. The Bible is right. Now, I, I can say this boldly. I don't need your money. You have to give to me because the Bible says so. That's between you and God. Me and my family eating ain't got nothing to do with them $2 you're going to give me. Now, I don't know who be giving me money, you know, on the, on the regular, who don't, who do. It don't matter what way we still eat. Right, right, right. So you ask around, and you find somebody that ain't giving. They say, you can't really have anything. They say, I get a nigga nothing. Wait, and they say, well, how are you still eating? <laughs> See, my job is to do what God tell me to do. Right. Not be concerned about. Now, I know sometimes you can't even talk to the pastor. You ain't giving to the pastor. Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't know about it. It is what it is. Everybody got to run the church where they God told them to run the church now. Their belief is, because if you ain't given, then that word can't be sown in your life. They take that scripture where Jesus said, don't take no, no, no extra clothes, no food, no money. He said, go out and you give them the truth. If they don't be a blessing to you, shake the dust. Don't you leave your blessing there. That's what they go off of. Now, I ain't, listen to me. Don't let foolishness stop you from obeying God so you can grow. Everybody ain't on the same level. That's right. That's right. Don't you ever let nobody make you think, you know, if you don't get in the pastor, God will kill you. You can't get no healing you ain't giving to the pastor. Everybody ought to listen to me. But when I learn how to fight, I can't be acting, I can't say that, I can't teach this enough. I can't be acting like I'm a lion when I'm a sheep. Right. Do you hear me? They said, well, you know, I said, well, you know, I gave two dollars last year, but <laughs> well, you can't listen to me. Whether you obey or whether you're an adult, you still get the same protection. Amen. Right. No, no, and of course, every, every preacher wants to see fruit abound in your account. You excel, you grow. Well, you can't grow without following the word of God. Right. But if you're not following it, I definitely don't want nothing bad to happen to you just because you because I'm still eating. Amen. Right. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. We was at, we was at home the other day. I had to show them kids a little something. <laughs> Child, I was throwing the 50s and the 20s to the side. 
Just, 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 they didn't say make it rain. Let's pray. <laughs> just, just, I just covered the whole cow with just, I just kept peeling, kept peeling, kept peeling, kept peeling. And they would say, wow. I go in my bag and get another stack. I just kept peeling, kept peeling. I'm doing all right. I got a phone, I got a, no, I got a text and an email just the other day uh, to increase the in, my income by about $2,100 a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I know that's not a lot of money to some of y'all. But to me, that's a, that, that, that do something. That give, give me a slice of bread or two. Amen. See, I'm all right. You don't give to me because I'm poor. You give to me because that's something between you and God. God is telling you what to do according to his word. You do that. Amen. If you ain't giving, don't you, don't you get, don't start getting let the devil talk to you. Amen. See, here's the thing. The moment you start trying to act like something you're not, that's when the devil just fooling you. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your money. If you're giving your tithe to your church offering, to me, you, I mean, you're good. You're good. God taking good care of me. He really is. Then you give your tithe to your church offering. You know that what the Bible tells you. If you ain't there, be giving no pastor. And uh, I don't know, some churches got other departments you got to give. You got the, the roof, the basement, right. the building fund, and all this other stuff, the van, the missionary money, the benevolence money. The, everybody gets some money. Right. I ain't got nothing to do with all that. Right. That's right. I ain't got nothing to do with all that. All I can tell you is you need to know when God puts something on your heart and call you to him, Stay faithful to it. Amen. Don't let the devil make you think you don't qualify for what God promised because you ain't doing what other people do. Right. Come on. Right. Hang in there. You'll get there. So right. Come on. So if you want to, you may never get it. Listen, the bottom line, you still is child. Yes. Amen. You're fighting and you will. Is I can't let the devil get me off my game. That's if right. I've been a faithful two dollars, God, you can count on my two dollars. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. Yeah. The devil ain't gonna ever get it. You gotta be faithful unto death. Yes. You can't let that devil make you think because of the whole world coming to an end. He said, Well, I'm gonna keep this here through the hole. <laughs> God, if he got streets of gold, he don't need my two dollars. Amen. Your two dollars is what helped God be God in your life. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Don't get off your game. Listen to this. Listen to this. Learning how to fight is essential. Yes, it is. And no matter who you are, lion or sheep. Being in the presence of God is always comforting. Amen. Amen. You know, let me tell you something. Y'all think y'all be doing me a favor when you when you be singing and worshiping and all that stuff. Child, do you know today was a perfect opportunity to get cancer out your body? Yes. yes. You hear me? Yes. No, 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 no. When we when we worship God like that and you know God is in the room, yes. child, you ain't nothing you can't get. Yeah. Why you here? Why you here? It's just like catching a handyman. You understand? Know He's yes. fixing the window, but then you remember. You understand? That stool is loose and, and, yes. and the doorknob coming off. Right. No, when God comes in, he says, hey, don't forget this foot. Amen. Right. Amen. Go right foot, but boy, I'm glad you're here. Work on it. Right. Right. If you can't fix it, I'll just take a new one. Amen. Amen. I know all about you, God. Don't even try to front. Right. I know all about you. Listen to me. When worship is going forth, right. that's a good time for me to get, gain some ground. Right. Yes. You know, I love boxing. That's the, the, the number one sport for me. And um, there was this, um, he, he, he never really reached <laughs> top, like to be pound for pound. He was in the ranking. His name was uh, Mosley, Sugar Shane Mosley. And Sugar Shane Mosley, um, he had good speed, good speed, fighting at 147, good speed. And I remember he, he knocked this guy down right at the end of the round, at the end of the round, and he said, he said, what he said when the they they give the warning blocks, the 10 second clap, clap, clap. He said when I when I uh, heard the warning blocks, he said I saw him relax, and I clocked him. Bye. Well, see this way. Don't ever think I can relax with this devil. Right, 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 right. right. Okay. You understand? And every opportunity I get to bust him in his head, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. If you don't get in the presence of God, when you get a worship service like that, yeah. child, you'll you be trying to, oh my God, man, you, yeah. I don't, don't, don't talk to me. Right. Right. 
Now, you take this however way you want. When your wife is no longer beautiful to you, you go going to mistreat her. You start, you start seeing her more of an assignment and a position player than your wife. When you start seeing your wife as a position player in the home, in the marriage, and you start seeing her just as, for lack of a better term, a piece of property that, that is your, you're going to mistreat it. That's just like you standing in the shower with a, with a plugged in radio. Ain't gonna, you may have a radio, but it ain't gonna be playing long. I'm telling you that. Right. Everybody, did you see? Yeah, I still got my radio, but it ain't doing nothing. Right. You gotta get to the place. You just start putting good things coming out your mouth. Right. Oh God, somebody gonna sell me their house for a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry that the heathen is laid off and can't get unemployment and mm -hmm. and all. But oh God, I thank you that I'm the one moving in and. Child, I'm, I'll be making some good confessions. Yes. I ain't make confessions over my enemies. I said they're gonna see the glory of God over my life, mm -hmm. and it's gonna, it's gonna, listen, it's gonna rip their guts out. Right. You know, all you gotta do is do better. Your enemies just don't want you to do better. Right. Just do better. Keep talking crazy stuff. Keep talking. Keep thinking to yourself, what, what am I gonna do with a hundred million dollars? Mm -hmm. So you gotta stretch your mind like that. Some of y'all be saying, if I just get this here stimulus check, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill a cup. Right, right. <laughs> no, man. What a stimulus check? Right. Start stretching yourself. Start thinking. Start, start, and, and start speaking stuff that make people think you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm walking down, my, down the street and... Uh, and uh, I looked at the house. My wife and I, we're going to get the facing redone, take the siding off and get the facing. And I remember we was debating on what to do. And uh, I was looking, I said, mm, that red brick, oh, mm. lovely. Mm. Nice. But that dough, that dough, come, oh, Lord, they, oh, Jesus, they set me the rail. Who that rail say God is here? I'm telling mm. you. If they never see the door, all they got to do is see. I might just get the rail and just tell them give me money back and the rest. <laughs> oh my God! I show you the rail and tell you you're gonna see God. You look at you say, "Oh, that's Jesus." I'm telling you. Amen. She built this rail. That rail. My, my wife said, "Take down all the bushes around the rail." That she want all the bushes gone all right, right, right now. Right, right. But right around that front, you don't, you don't need. Listen, you know, we don't need no added stuff. Right. Right. I want to see them rails, man. I'm telling you, that big old dog. Oh my God! I'd be sitting there looking at my house. I call some stuff, and it'd be not a dolly work. Right, 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 right. Child, be looking in my back. You can spend a half a million dollars in your backyard. I'm telling you, and you ain't got nothing impressive. Now you ain't got to believe me. Wait till you wait till you get your your yard. Wait till you get your yard. So I got this pit I want to put down. They go down about three three steps, and then it's gonna be. 60 feet long, 12 feet wide, the pit, and uh, nice stone. Oh man, I'm, I see it. I start calling it. Mm -hmm. And listen to me, and I ain't borrowing no money to do it. Mm -hmm. If you don't keep talking, the people say, well, he all stuck. But I'm not, I'm not trying to get your stuff. Right. I'm talking about my stuff. Right. Right. Haters are going to hate. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care if you redid your kitchen last year. If you did it with a cabinet you weren't in love with, just go in there and say, hmm, somebody going to be selling me my favorite cabinets yes. for $5 a cabinet. Yes. Come on. Start calling things in there. Listen, if you're too scared to say it, you'll never have it. Amen. I got more than enough. Yes. Keep saying that to yourself. Yes. Ain't nobody mad with those people that got, got a beef with you. Right. I got more than enough. I'm blessed coming, I'm blessed going. I'm loaded. Man, I'm telling you, just like, go, listen, go to the family cookout and say that. Everybody, everybody that got a little beef with you, they're going to all get like freeze a little bit. Then they're going to go in joke mode. Right. Right. You understand? <laughs> but all that don't, they, they, they be like, all right now, I hear you. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, but you ain't going to get to me to that. I'm telling you that right now. Right. Right. Then walk up in the middle of the cookout. I'm loaded. <laughs> 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 They try, they try to, they're going to run you down. They're going to talk about you. I'm telling you, people don't want you to do good. But I'm not trying to get nothing from you. I'm calling things into my life. Good health. When 
I look at my kids, I said, no weapon formed against their future will prosper. Amen. Nothing that the devil got planned will live. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Don't die, man. Don't die. Be calling that stuff in. You got to speak over your children. If you don't, they'll go crazy. Yes. Start calling things into your life. Happiness and joy. Yes. Walk into your home and you start saying joy and happiness live here forever. Yes. No confusion. No depression. Ain't no suicidal spirits here. Amen. The devil is alive. Yes. Amen. Start calling things in your life. People that got a problem with you, you don't need to be concerned with. That's true. But God got a problem with you. You're not calling them in. Amen. Start bringing them into your life. Start calling things in. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want God to do in your life, start speaking it. If you want healing, start speaking it. Amen. You want God to do something in your finances, start speaking it. Yeah. So true. Now, now, when he speaks, there, it ain't going to be no, I will do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, you're going to hear some instructions. Yes. Walk them out. Walk them out. Now, I, I never get them instructions I hear on TV. You know, I, I hear on TV, people say they ask God for something, they go to the mailbox, there's a million dollars in there. Right. Right. I ask God for something, my phone rings. Here's some more work. Right. 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 So I said, well, you know, God, what am I going to get the mailbox stuff? Right. 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 I'm serious. No, because sometimes you ask for stuff, you don't know what you're asking for. That's right. I told God, I didn't want to pay, I didn't want to take out no equity loan nothing for this pool. And all this other stuff. Well, okay, no problem. Now you go and be on truck. Right. And then and I'll get you your pool money. Well, why the guy on TV didn't have to go to get on the truck? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Start calling things in your life and then hear God. Amen. Keep hearing him. Amen. I got a mind and a heart that I want to glorify God. I don't care about people. Amen. I can care less what people think about me. Amen. I can care less what people think about what I drive, where I I don't care nothing about that. Amen. All I care about is glorifying God with my life. Yes. Yes. I glorify God on the level I'm on. Jesus. So I don't need to live like Jay-Z. Have his house to glorify God. Where I'm at, I need to glorify God more. Yes. Father, I thank you for this day. Your children come to this place to receive from you. Give us what we give us what we need, Holy Ghost, that we can fight and fight the good fight of faith. That we would not allow the devil to take us off our game. If God has called us to sing and to bless him, give us what we need to sing and bless him. If God wants to use us to be a blessing to others, don't allow what's going on to stop us from giving and sowing like God wants us to. Holy Spirit, strengthen us to stand and to weather the storm that we can grow in God. Bless God, giving him the praise and the glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen.